Uh, Scott Butterworth at GameSpot, you can go read his review. He gave the game a 6 out of 10. Uh, he played, I don't know, like 60 hours or something total. Yeah. He still had a, he was playing a lot more yesterday just to check it out. Uh, but he's on vacation, a well-earned vacation after PAX and reviewing that game for us. But we uh, at the office all kind of have differing opinions on this game. Uh, some of us are really diehard Mass Effect fans. Some of us are kind of coming to it fresh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Die hard. Yeah. And we wanted to talk more about it, but also we kind of wanted to branch off the games we were just talking about to mm-hmm. kind of suss out whether we think Mass Effect Andromeda might be improved down the road. Um, I just want to get initial impressions here at the table first. Kelly, you're like sort of early in the game I'm still? pretty early still, yeah. yeah. But um, I think my biggest problem is the writing mm-hmm. for a lot of the dialogue. Yeah. Um, so just to get that out of the way. Still to dial, yeah, we can I'm, get more into it. But I mean, it's like, especially the flirting stuff is like my 13-year-old fan fiction. Mm-hmm. Like, it's real bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, you know when you're like 13, you think being awkward is very charming? Mm-hmm. And you're like, oh, I'll just try to be extra awkward. And it's like, no, don't don't try to do that. She's no, writer's no Anne from Persona. No. <laughs> See, I know Persona she's, now. I can do it. She's can no, name drop. She's no best girl. But Jake. Uh, you like Mass Effect a ton. You're doing well. You're uh, I'll pimp something quick. You're doing the saddest party in the Citadel. Explain this to me. Uh, so Jean Luc and I are actually playing through the end of Mass Effect Two. We've actually already done that. We're on Mass Effect Three right now. We're just trying to kill as many of our companions as we can. Mm-hmm. It's rough. Like we just killed. I, I don't want to spoil. We killed a certain character, and it kind of broke my heart. I regret doing this whole series. Is it Garrus? Well, that was sad, that but like that heart. was like a quick death. Like he got shot in the face with a rocket, and it's like, oh, okay. Or are you talking about when they force you to cut off Morden's head with a saw? <laughs> well, <laughs> th- it is the character in question, but that doesn't happen. This is the game yeah. I want to play. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Sounds good. It's like a horror where you can game. Kill everyone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I'm a big Mass Effect fan. I do like Andromeda. I think Andromeda. There is a lot wrong with this game. I think the writing is the biggest offense um, because, like. When you play a Bioware game, that's what that's what you expect. Like good writing, mm-hmm. good story, good characters, and all of that kind of falls flat, which is a huge shame. Um, there are some characters that are okay. There's some characters that are good, and there are some like dialogue sequences and like certain aspects of the story that are really cool. But when it boils down to it, like I think Scott actually mentioned it in his review that like a lot of that game needed to be cut. Um, Mm -hmm. Like the good stuff is buried and I think that's very true like I played I think I'm at like 30 hours or now and there's probably about like four or five missions where I've like really enjoyed as opposed to like Mass Effect 2 where every mission was like had its own story had its own arc and it had like a cool location and this it's like all right so I'm flipping switches on a planet and that leads to something else like. I don't know, like I'm, I'm, I've been playing a Sudoku puzzle for like the past 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, explain that quick, how that works. <laughs> like, well, not Sudoku, how Sudoku works. I've been waiting five years <laughs> for this game, and I'm doing Sudoku puzzles. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like the hacking and these remnant terminals you come across. I think I don't. It's not a spoiler now. You know, there's like an ancient civilization. That's yeah. all I'll say. But like the hacking in this game is a Sudoku puzzle. Yeah, like and before some... the show, Jake was trying to do one. He's like just swearing at his computer. <laughs> and like... it's not that they're hard. It's just, what? The, why am I doing well, Sudoku? Yeah, exactly. There's some simple ones that take you like, I don't know, like a couple minutes. And it's like, that's fine. You know, that's a nice diversion. But then there are other ones that I'm at for like 20, 30, 40 minutes. And it's like, what, this just brought this game to a grinding halt. Yeah. Um, I but... liked, my, my theory was that in the Andromeda Galaxy, the remnants to protect their technology thought this like really clever puzzle would protect it. But then all of a sudden these aliens from a galaxy where that's like sold at gas stations comes in. It's like, this is Sudoku. It's like a, it's like a word search is there. And then you're like, Oh sweet. I just gained access to this. I won't spoil it. I think though, cause I did just like, I guess kind of shit on mass effect Andromeda a lot. And like, to be fair, I am enjoying this game. I am a huge mass effect fan. So uh, maybe it's some maybe it's rose tinted glasses because like it is cool being back in this universe. It is cool seeing a lot of of these different races again, seeing that interaction between the different species. And I think the worlds are really cool. Like you get to one later called Eladin, um, which is by far one of the coolest settings in a Mass Effect game, I would say, at least in terms of an open one. Um, and there's like six or seven different planets you can explore. Some are huge, some are smaller. But doing that is really cool, and it makes me, I just wish everything supporting those cool areas was also cool. But if you're a Mass Effect fan, like, I think you'll enjoy it. Yeah, so one thing that, you know, 
when Scott's reviewing the game, he's just judging the game on its own merits, right? It's a review. But a lot of people think that we're disliking Andromeda because in comparison to Mass Effect 1, 2, or 3, it's worse. But I am I love those games, but I didn't come into this from like a fan side. I came into this and I just objectively don't like this game for a lot of reasons. Like Callie mentioned, there's stilted dialogue. I don't think there's much momentum to the plot, what, despite the fact that the idea of us being the alien coming to a new galaxy and not being visited is really cool. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, Mass Effect 1, 2, 3 was really cool premise in that it's this galaxy that has already come to grips with the fact that there's alien life and it's got a galactic government. There's like, you know, different species yeah. are helping each other out or at war or have their own problems that like humans know about. This game is just, it's all brand new and it fell into so many, not just like sci fi tropes, but also video game tropes. Like, I immediately felt like I was thrust into combat for no reason. There wasn't anything interesting about the arrival in the Andromeda Galaxy unless you went around. And like maybe one out of eight NPCs was, had something like actually interesting problem that didn't exist in Mass Effect 1, 2, 3. Mm-hmm. These people just left everything they knew behind. And I don't know. They seemed fine immediately. Uh, I did character creator. Side note. Don't do character creator if you don't want your dad to look like uh, <laughs> a offspring of Jeff Goldblum and William H. Macy. If they kind of like had an affair oh, on the side. Yeah. He looks. I don't have footage of it. Thank God. If I did, I would Ugh. scrub my computer. I hate with... her makeup so much. <laughs> it doesn't look good because they kind of like take this amalgamation of. I think I could be wrong. I think they take what your twin looks like because you, if you pick Sarah Ryder, Scott Ryder will be your twin, and they take what both of those look like and kind of combine it. And what happened to mine was just a monstrosity. See, mine looked a little bit like Edward James almost. Oh, nice. So it was fine. I was like, oh, the Battlestar Galactica feel. Yeah, it's That's never fine. a bad thing. Yeah, I. But like I said, the writing in this game, it's just between the dialogue, I don't think the the pacing is great because you're getting distracted by all these side quests. The side quests I have problems with. Uh, you said you did four or five missions which are interesting to you. That's You've got four or five on me. Like I I didn't really enjoy any of them that I played. Um, yeah, I mean, well, how far are you though? Um, like, I did... You're still on EOS, correct? The first. No, 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 no. I did the next... Okay. I'm on the... You're, I did you're the next like two. I did the, the other two. I did those two. I'm on the one after that. Kadara? I'm doing this stuff after Vold and Havarl. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I don't think I'm as far as you, but I'm into the game. Um, and like I said, this kind of reminds me of uh, Dragon Age Inquisition in that I'm doing so much that doesn't matter. And, you know, I'm not judging it based on how it compares to Horizon or Zelda, but those games, like, I was exploring because there, there was stuff, the stuff you were doing, like, contributed to your character or there's it felt meaningful within the world this stuff just feels like it's a checklist uh i was reading your review over at kotaku today i think and i think it was patricia hernandez was saying Mm -hmm. it reminded her of a really full email inbox and it overwhelmed her and she didn't know like which one to pursue first and which one to actually kind of prioritize um and i don't they, they tell me that the nexus is you know like it's things aren't going well i'm trying not to spoil anything and i won't but you know, things aren't like going according to plan. That's been evident from the trailers and everything. And but they don't convey that. They tell you that, but you don't see much of it. You have to go seek it out, right? And that was always the case. Like that was what's cool about Mass Effect One, Two, Three, and some parts of Andromeda, you some of the characters. See it. At least I've found where but you like, do see it. Yeah, maybe I just like, haven't. I haven't seen a lot of examples. And like the the example I think of right now doesn't come till later. But I think it's a pretty cool example of how they are struggling. Yeah, yeah but I mean. I don't know. I don't think it capitalizes on the cool premise that it has right away. And I don't think it feels more like this, like almost like third person. The story they're telling seems very separate from the gameplay is my main problem. And that has been my case throughout. But again, you're farther in, but maybe it'll get better for me. But at all, at the same time, if I'm 12 hours in and it's still not grabbing me, then I don't want to be keep playing. Well, from what I've seen and from what I've heard talking to different people, it sounds like depending on what you get distracted by and what you choose to do, you could be having a vastly better or worse experience with it. Um, Because a lot of people I know who've been playing for a while uh, have been like, oh yeah, it really opened up and like it started out with like a rocky start and the combat was great, but everything else was a little rough. And then, you know, I met this character and it was really cool and I had this cool arc. Um, but if you decide to do a bunch of other shit, you're going to miss all of that. And then you're going to have a really bad, you know, you could have a bad 30 hours. Um, and I think that's probably the main problem is you, I mean, 
Patricia's metaphor is really accurate where it's like if you just follow the wrong trail, if you have this overwhelming email inbox and you find something that's really bad and you keep doing that and you never get rewarded, you're going to get burnt out really quickly. Um, and to go back to the like a, a Zelda comparison, the reason it's different is you get rewarded consistently. Mm -hmm. um, you can get very distracted. And that game is very overwhelming, but you are all, almost always rewarded by what you do. Um, and I think that's probably a, a big problem uh, with Andromeda. I also, I mean, I just, I really can't shake the, the, the dialogue is just unfortunately very amateurish. Um, like there's a, there's a character who basically gives you her life story and she's just like, you meet her and she's like, oh, well I'm trans and like, and it's like, that's, I appreciate the effort, but like, that's just so like your first creative writing effort. Um, and that really is so disappointing when that's why I would want to play a Mass Effect game. I just can't shake that even though I really do enjoy the combat and uh, exploration is cool and I like the universe and I love space. Like that's just really hard for me to, to get past. I want to chime in as someone who really has not really cared about Mass Effect at all. Um, so you, you know, we say not to compare it to games like Zelda or whatever, but for me, I think it is possible to make comparisons there, not direct ones, but you know, coming off of games like Horizon, Zelda, Persona 5, Nier, like those games make excellent first impressions. Mm. The, the four hours I played of Mass Effect Andromeda d did nothing to excite me. It only pushed me away from the game and trying to play it felt like I was forcing myself to do something I really didn't want to do. I think first impressions are very important and this game honestly really fails at doing that. So, I, you know, as someone who's, who doesn't have like an understanding of what the series can do and what it's been great at in the past, like it's there's a huge barrier there because if you don't have that those hopes and wishes, what do you, you don't know what to look forward to. Like the combat starts off very basic and in my opinion boring, right? The game throws a lot of systems at you like, okay, here's how you upgrade all your profiles, here has to become a different warrior, here are all the skills. It doesn't explain any of it. The UI is a mess, the animations look like crap. Like I, I could just go on and on and I don't want to hate for the sake of hating, but there's something to be said for a game that can't make an argument for itself immediately. Like I, every game I just mentioned, you know, other than this, there was something that made me multiple things that made me want to keep playing where like I couldn't put the controller down. Like that that's a huge problem this game has. And I think that's probably a reason why people may be struggling to to really get into it because it takes so long to justify what it's trying to do. Yeah, I mean, to, it's not an RPG, but looking at another recent game, Night in the Woods, with its writing, grabbed me within, like, two minutes. Yeah, it doesn't well, have to be an RPG. Like, I, I think you can compare games just on what they do in general and how good they are at being yeah. a captivating experience that gets you excited to, to be in that world, to play a part in it. I was just thrust into this Pathfinder position. Suddenly, I'm in charge of everything, off, like, just right off the bat with, like, an event that's just really ham-fisted. And then, like... I, the game is sort of ushering me around and I don't feel like I've earned my position. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like the things I'm doing are building up to anything, really. I mean, look at Witcher 3. That's a massive game. It's also an RPG, but I was... I mean, you, it takes a while to really get momentum in that game, right? But it's not... It's still right away, like, you get a really good sense of the world. I think they're making good use of making me feel like I'm part of it. Uh, I get a sense of Geralt. I get a sense of the people around him, like Yennefer, or uh, what's his master's name? Geralt uh, Vesemir. Master. Vesemir, thank you. Mr. 400 hours in that game, or no, more than that now. More than that. Double. Four playthrough. <laughs> yeah, 800 hours. Sorry. <laughs> we talk about that all the time. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I, again, I said it the other day and it seemed to resonate. I was like, I could have played an entire playthrough of Night in the Woods in, a in the time it took me to get into Mass Effect. Yes, yeah, so I want to touch on Night in the Woods a little bit. Um, I read an article yesterday. I think it was on Waypoint. Um, forgive me for not knowing who wrote it, but it was about. Uh, awkward dialogue that's natural and how Night in the Woods really masters that and how uh, when we're speaking, we, we very rarely um, speak perfectly the way we want to write. You don't really reform a sentence and rewrite a sentence. Um, and what Night in the Woods does really well is the dialogue is naturally very awkward. Like May's just kind of like, I don't know, man. And um, it, it feels like how you would talk to somebody versus uh, the writing in in Mass Effect is awkward in a an unnatural way, if that makes sense. Um, like there's a scene where you're flirting and she's just like, Hi, I think you're cute and it's, I like having you around. And I'm like, no, no one says no one says that. Um, and uh, so the the writing in Night, Night in the Woods um, is like I just wanted to highlight that difference. Like it's not awkwardness that's the problem. It's it's the 
is it something that a person would actually say? Mm -hmm. um, and that goes the opposite way. If you have somebody who's perfectly articulating themselves all the time and is always eloquent, that's also very unnatural. Yeah. Um, and so you have to find a, a good balance when you're writing dialogue. That's very hard for a lot of writers because you're used to crafting beautiful sentences. You're used to retooling a sentence. I think that's definitely harder to sell on a triple A game though to make like thing like Mass Effect the original Mass Effect series like had a lot of tight dialogue but I think it also left room for that kind of awkward kind of like I it, I was actually looking at the script for reboot today and you bring up like that scene where Tali Tally is drunk. Yeah. And I think like yeah, like A Night in the Woods is a, is a different case in a sense because I feel like you can do something like that. You can make it awkward. While Mass Effect, you have a tight narrative that you're trying to tell mm -hmm. and you need to have, like the characters need to say what they need to say. Yeah. But I do agree that like Mass, Mass Effect, the Andromeda just like can not get, like it just takes itself way too seriously. Mm -hmm. It's been filtered too many times. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, but I guess the overarching question, do you think that with DLC or a I mean, obviously, there will be patches that will fix a lot of the technical bugs, but with DLC, with expansions and whatnot, do you think they'll improve the like the core things we have wrong? Like maybe they did with Destiny. No, I don't think so either. I I think that I hope they do. They can fix. Some I'm of the trying to be positive. Like I hope physics they physics stuff like that. Yeah. Like, sure, that's possible. They're not going to go in and redo animations unless someone forgot to check a box. Like, oh right, their eyebrows are supposed to move. Let's <laughs> put that back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> I think that, <laughs> like, yeah, animations, I don't think they're going to fix no. that. I think bugs, they'll fix that. I think DLC has the potential to redeem some of the writing. I know one thing about Dragon Age Inquisition, I didn't play all of it, but I do know that the DLC was some of the best in Inquisition, one of the, some of the best <laughs> parts of Inquisition. Sorry, I'm just imagining a DLC in which... Bioware goes back to when Ryder is taking her SATs and you find out she scored like a 20. You're like, oh, that now her personality <laughs> makes sense. I get it. That's why she, he or she is dumb. Uh, <laughs> right. But but I, I do think that they can, at least for fans who like stuck with Andromeda like me, who's even though I'm not in love with it, I'm sticking with it. I think they can redeem it through some really tight, well-written DLC. Uh, whether that'll happen, I don't know. I hope it does. But as a whole, like, I don't think they're going to do anything to bring someone like Peter back or Mike, who is a fan of the other games. Yeah, I mean, I, I was just telling Pete this. This is part of a wider thing. I'm, I've been really good lately about, you know, like, unless I was reviewing things back last year, I don't review anything anymore. And obviously it's different if you have to review a game. But now that I'm kind of looking at, like, doing different things, I'm better about not forcing myself through a game I really don't like, which I realize that's, you know, I, I am lucky enough to have access to a lot of games for my job so I have a lot of options but I'm also like I feel like I need to beat Andromeda but I'm really trying to get myself not to because I don't I don't see the point and I don't yeah, think it's I, pulling me through and I don't think it's worth it yeah I don't know like if it's gonna take you 60 hours and like a lot of that isn't good like yeah I don't think it's worth it but you know like at least I would wait until they patch at least a little bit of what's wrong with it but I don't think it's gonna fix it you know intrinsically like, uh, you know, like Destiny, like Callie had mentioned, Destiny, Taken King is a really good example. I think that actually, and that's that's different because Destiny is, they said from the beginning, Bungie was saying Destiny is almost like a platform in itself rather than a singular yes. discrete game. Mass Effect itself is a very linear, like you were saying, narrative, like game and then sequel trilogy. It's not really something that's constantly evolving the way yeah. Destiny is. Or like a, just any multiplayer game nowadays. Um, but I do think that Destiny did a really good job of addressing major problems and also just like smaller things that people were just really bothered by. And then that came through, they got a new voice actor and they rewrote some of his dialogue and that was awesome. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't see stuff like that happening for Andromeda because I think the problems are deeper than just what Destiny had. Yeah, I mean, I think like I've said this before, but I'd be able to overlook almost every issue if I like if, if the writing and dialogue and characters yeah. were good. Definitely. Because um, there are people not, out there that so, like the game. Yeah. To like, clarify, like I don't like Jean-Luc's IP, like, Jake's like kind of lukewarm yeah, on it. it. You know, Scott still had a good time in the end, I think. And, you know, like it's just a matter of <laughs> preferences at this point. So read the reviews, uh, decide for what you will. I don't like the game. Doesn't mean you don't have to. Pete doesn't really like it. Doesn't mean you have to. Callie's going to play more or no? I'm, yeah, I'm going to play more. I'm okay. pretty, I'm pretty on the fence right now. Cool. All right. So, that was our Mass Effect Andromeda to talk about, you know, like whether it can be fixed in the future based on like the other AAA games with rough launches that we mentioned. So uh, let us know what you think. Uh, do you like Bioware? 
sorry, do you like Mass Effect Andromeda? Do you like what Bioware Montreal has done with this? Because I know there are a lot of people out there that are enjoying this game for what it is. Um, and also, you know, just let us know what you think they could do in the future feasibly to fix this. Uh, I do have one question I want to get on really quick. Scott Rabideau on Twitter, I believe. Um, thank you for sending a question. He says, is a new Mass Effect trilogy pretty much guaranteed at this point? Like, haven't they said this is going to be... Or no, sorry, haven't they said Andromeda could be a standalone experience? Yeah, so it sounds like they yeah. said it could be a standalone experience, but Scott, who's finished it, said there's definitely room. I mean, yeah, that's that's what which, they would do. That's yeah, like yeah, business. Exactly. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I don't think we're going to get, like, a trilogy in terms of, like, Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, where your decisions or whatever carry over, but I, I have a feeling we'll see another Mass Effect. It might be another four or five years, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, and Scott Rabdo was saying, Based on the performance of Andromeda, I think it's too early to tell. I mean, I'm sure it it's gonna sell. It's selling, the game yeah. is gonna sell. Yeah, for I sure. Mean, it, you know, that I don't think that's the issue. I think it's the perception of, of what they've done and yeah. how they correct that. Yeah, Scott Rabbitoh, thank you so much for your Twitter question. Uh, keep, everybody, keep sending those in, and uh, everybody, thank you so much for being active in the chat. We appreciate it. We like having you here. Um, we are going to uh, wrap up our show, but like I said, if you're watching this on YouTube or GameSpot, let us know in the comments what you think about uh, Mass Effect Andromeda. You can go read Scott Butterworth's review. He gave it a 6 out of 10 that is up on GameSpot right now. Uh, on Sunday at 3 p.m., uh, Jake and I, we have the third episode of our show reboot going up. It's uh, I'll get more in-depth with my opinion, more specifically, or I guess broadly, about science fiction in uh, video games and just movies in general and whatnot, and also why I don't think Andromeda kind of does science fiction well. That's not necessarily Jake's opinion, too. It's mainly mine, but, well, well yeah, you can yeah. go watch that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like I said, let us know what you think about the game in the comments. 